Hi everyone, welcome to BIMCO Bytes. Today we'll be um, talking about working and manipulating Revit data between a Revit project and database files using Revit DB Link. So two programs that you need today outside of Revit, of course, is to have installed the following for today's session. So the first one is DB Link, which is a Revit extension, and the other one is Microsoft Access. So what is Revit DB Link? So Revit DB Link is an interoperability tool between a Revit project and a Microsoft Access or an ODBC database. So if you don't, so how to access it, you go through add-ins and Revit DB Link over here. And if you don't see this installed on your Revit, you can actually install it as an extension on the Autodesk management portal. So if we go there just quickly now, so if you're under um, this web address, so manageautodesk.com products, go to all products and services, type in Revit, um, go to view details under Revit. Select the version of Revit that you want your extension to be installed on. Um, go to extensions and scroll down until you see DB link for Revit and then download and then install as required. So the next one to talk about is access, which is what you'll need for this um, DB link interoperability. So I'll just open it up for you now. So over here, this is um, what it looks like. So it's a Microsoft product. So um, typically um, the product comes with most um, Microsoft subscriptions. So the one that I have in particular is the free six five apps for business. Um, so another thing to note for this access to work with um, DB Link is to ensure that you have the 64 bit version installed rather than the 32 bits. And, and lastly, with access, um, ensure that at least the um, 2013 runtime is um, installed as it's recommended. So there are newer versions of um, Microsoft Access around, but you'll see the interface interface of DB Link. Um, it only goes up to a certain year range and you'll see that shortly. All right, cool. So let's get back into Revit. So what we'll do is I'll be working on this project today to manipulate the, the data. So let's click on the Revit DB Link add-in. You can kind of see, you can link Revit models with these types of databases on the tabs here, Microsoft Access and ODBC. So ODBC um, is Open Database Connectivity, it stands for. So it's a standard API for accessing database management systems. So essentially connecting between computers or between computer programs. So currently I don't have any connections selected here. Um, you can simply um, create one via here, via export, or you can actually even do it via the export function here. So ODBC databases. So um, you can actually specify between a, a user or um, a system machine setup. So as an example, um, if I did create a connection via this method, um, you'll go through a list of the drivers that I have installed here. So um, even though the ones that I'm showing with you today um, are on here, your list may look different to mine essentially. So you can only work with the ones that you have installed on your PC. So because um, we are working with Microsoft Access, I will create a connection via there. So what we'll do is we'll select a new connection, export. We'll create uh, an X M, uh, Microsoft database file. I'll just call it the name of my Revit project and then hit save. And I'll let it do its thing. All right, cool. So it looks like that's done. So what we'll do is we'll go to access now and open that file that it's exported out. Okay, we'll hit open now. So you can see, 
um, doesn't look like much at as a start. So you can kind of see it has access to a list of tables through here. You can kind of scroll down of the options that you've got available to select from as a table. So um, let's go for a field. So as an example, let's go to views. So you can kind of see it's got a lot of information in there, ranging from what parameters that you can use via that category. And um, with views especially, I guess, you know, all of this in this list is based on, you know, views in your projects that are made, view templates or whatnot, and even, um, you know, if it's placed on sheets and stuff. So you can see all that information that's available and all with ID numbers. So, you know, sometimes when you can um, select element by ID and then you can just nominate the ID number. So if you've got a journal file and it spits out, you know, an issue with one of the element ID numbers and, you know, if you type one in with a view that cannot be found. So this is another method that you can source those ID numbers. Um, you can filter information so you can you know, um, send the information so you can list it out. And if you wanted to um, manipulate the database to show what you need to show essentially. So that's probably um, one of the many, many um, categories that you can work with. So what I'll do next is I'll try to manipulate this data so then it can be um, put across into the Revit project. Let's go with the roof first. So. Um, we can kind of nominate, you can kind of see information about it, the volume, the areas and all of that. Um, let's change the type here. And then um, we'll put some comments, we'll call it roof, go to roof types. Um, we'll attempt to change a bit more information. So let's go to um, stairs. So that's a nice and simple one because I know in my project I've only got one stair. Um, put that um, confirm on site. We'll just put ST1. Let's look into floors now. So you can kind of see what the options that you can use for floors. And let's kind of um, sort this list out so you can kind of see it's listed out based on you know your ID numbers your types um, and ordered it via phase so there's a bit of sorting happening so what we'll do is the one that I want to try and attempt to do is I might change some of the ones that I know that are in the project so um, let's let's say we want to change actually what we'll do is we'll attempt to change the levels actually. So you can kind of see that there's um, a few values per um, these codes in the levels. So these are um, essentially the, the ID numbers for it. So let's, let's change a few of these in the project. And then you will see what I'm updating here. If I try to um, change the level here, you can kind of see um, how these ID numbers are matching to the code. So like ground level, level one datum, they've all got their, their unique ID number. And um, so we'll go back to, to the floors again. And let's attempt to change maybe one of the floor types. So let's call this soil and change update soil earth as an example so it's just saving a few bits of information just so we can put it back into the project hit save we'll close it down okay cool all right let's go back to db link click the one that we've created and established so um depending on you know how many of these or database files you've got within your Revit version, they'll still continue to be on the list. If you want to remove them, you can actually do it at a later time. Um, let's go edit and import.
All right, we'll just click OK. We'll just kind of ignore these messages. You can kind of see some information has been updated here. So, so the changes that we've made in the database file have been applied. So, so I guess one of the things which I'll show you via the log file that it has produced. So you can kind of see um, the legends and um, what the the appearance and the meanings mean essentially. So probably most of the time you'll see because I've only made minor updates to the access file is um, a lot of gray in there. So that usually means the value has no change, which is quite fair. Um, you can hyperlink like click on the hyperlinks and um, go to the items based on um, the fields that were changed in the access um, program. So we'll go through and see the ones that have been updated. So the floors, and you could already see on my screen um, in the 3D view, they've been updated to um, different levels. Um, if we go to the fl floor type, so unfortunately, um, so the, this color is a fuchsia and the blue is the, the change value. So the fuchsia color means that the parameter is read only. So, so if we go back to, you know, that, that one that we tried to change to soil, um, it hasn't changed. However, it did update this parameter to soil earth. And then the roof, um, same thing here. So um, it didn't change to that um, type that I wanted it to change, but um, the comments have been applied. And um, the last one, and then um, if you go to stairs, yeah, so the comments and the mark has been applied there. So, so if we go and click on some of these elements, so this is the one where um, it didn't change the type name, but the type mark has been updated. If you go to, let's say, select the, the stair, the comments and the mark have been updated based on those settings. And yeah, obviously, as you saw the change when I was applying for it, um, all the floors have been moved up a level. All right, so we'll go back to DB link again. It's like the link that we've created. Do edit and import. So now what we're going to attempt to do is edit some values within this interface. So rather than opening access, you know, typing the values in, saving it, closing it, we're going to do it through here. So what I'm going to try and attempt to do is to, um, so I'll, I'll make it shown so the 3D view can be seen, is to do it via the planting categories. So what I'll just try to do is maybe I'll um, try to, you know, change the phases of some of the items. And we'll just see what um, can be manipulated. So I've purposely tried to see what happens if that setting has been done. Unfortunately, you can kind of see I'm attempting to change the type IDs. It's not letting me to do that. And even like the ID numbers, it's not letting me do that either. Um, let's hit OK. Yeah, cool. So another... Um, report has been sent, but you can kind of see the visible changes based on um, the phase filters that um, I have applied to this view. So we'll open that report again. So now um, the planting has been updated. So you can kind of see that, um, yeah, the phases and created and demolished have been applied to those few trees that I've um, assigned it to. So let's open um, access again. And we'll browse to that file. Let's go search through planting. And you can kind of see this has been done in access without needing to open it. So, so the things that I've um, imported and, and edited um, have been applied to access without even opening access it and um, work like being able to edit it via here. Cool. And um, probably another thing to add, the log files. So once you're able to um, get a report, you can copy and paste the file path on here. 
and then um, it will lead you to the file where it's stored. So the more times I guess you, you do an edit and import, the more files will be added and then you can actually refer to them historically as well. So that that all saved in, in this um, file path. All right, so one that I prepared earlier is um, with access. So if you want to explore further on the capabilities, you can actually generate um, bespoke custom layouts on reports. So this is one that I prepared on a furniture specification. So um, essentially what we'll do is it's based on, I guess, values. And if you kind of make a comparison, sorted via keynotes as well. And um, probably the values to focus on is like, yeah, the keynotes and the counts. So um, the sorting by the keynotes. And if you scroll down, they kind of should match based on the Revit data that you have and um, creating the information based on parameters and putting it into a report format. So going back to access again, it's a DB link. So um, yeah, essentially um, the design layout of the reports, yeah, you just drag and drop the fields that you need. And that's based on this data that has been exported out of DB link. Um, we have additional information too to generate this. So um, schedules that you can integrate as well. So um, the schedule from Revit has been exported to here where you can link a bit more information that, you know, you can't manipulate too much in access and um, creating queries to ensure that that information does match up to what you need. And um, this is, yeah, the report that I was mentioning before the spec where, um, yeah, you can um, create it per page by base page basis on how you want it to look. 